when he's brand new in sales, sometimes we'll bring out veterans that have been, you know, learning NEPQ with us uh, as one of our clients for a year, two years, three years since we started. And then other times we'll bring up people that maybe just got into, you know, became a client three or four months ago and have already quadrupled their sales or whatever. Just like this gentleman here, uh, Brian, how do you pronounce your last name? Choi. Choi. Brian Choi, who actually lives in South Korea. I was going to say North Korea, but I'm, you know, I don't know if they let you use StreamYard. Kim Jong-un let me out. He won't let you, they won't let you use StreamYard in North Korea. So I don't think so, no. He's in, he's in South Korea working remotely at a sales position, uh, never been in sales, never had a sales job, worked in some like uh, roles, you know, like booking leads for people and stuff like that, but never actually talking to people on the phone and different things and got into sales less than five months ago and went from basically making, yeah, I think he made like $1,500 in commissions his first month. And now he's up to that six figure range. You know, you're talking like nine, 10 grand a month. Which for some of you, you might be like, man, you know, I already make 15. Well, Brian just started four months ago. Like he's brand new in sales. Okay. So quadrupling your income in four months while you're still learning NEPQ is impressive. So we're going to break down his sales process. Brian promised to throw out some golden nuggets for you guys. Uh, and then we're going to get started. <laughs> All right, Brian, walk us through what were you doing a couple years ago before you got into sales? Because you're a young guy, you're early 20s. Yeah, so before that, I was in the military. So I was serving the Korean military for about two years. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I was just doing that, working 14, 16 hours a day. Okay. Um, you're in the military for the Korean Army, not the U.S. Yeah, Army. The Korean not the U.S. Army. Army. Okay, gotcha. Don't okay. thank me for my service. I didn't help you guys. I helped me. <laughs> like, so you're in the Korean military. Uh, how many years were you in the Korean military for? So I was about for like two years. Okay. Two years. Is that like standard over there where they make you serve or how do, or are you just volunteer? Yeah, no. Yeah. You, um, it's, it's about like two years. It's shorter now, but when I went, it was about two years. Okay. Perfect. So you got out of the military and what happened? Uh, I don't know. So even in the military, like when I, I knew I was going to get out at some point. So I didn't want to, I don't know it's the typical, don't, don't want to get a nine to five job, so on and so forth. Okay. And so in the military, I was reading books like uh, The Wolf on Wall Street. Those okay, books, right. Yeah. So I, was, I was reading those books, like practicing sale. I didn't even know what I was going to do. Yeah. But um, so I was doing that. And then I got out, started kind of looking at the online stuff. And then um, okay. now we're here. So you got a job um, selling uh, remotely, right? So especially around COVID, that kind of got popular. You know, sales jobs popped up all over the world where you could work from home on Zoom selling something online, right? So for what I understand from us talking, and obviously you're in our advanced inner circle, so we were talking a couple uh, times a week in our group training for those advanced members. Um, you got into a job selling uh, people that were wanting to start their own marketing agency, or if they'd already started a marketing agency, they were having a hard time growing it and scaling it. So your company would train them how to really grow their marketing agency. What caused you to get into that type of sales job over something else? Uh, that's a good question. I just uh, one of my buddies was already doing that. Uh, he was living in Korea as well, and he was already doing that uh, at that point. Before that, I was doing like other stuff, right? Okay. And then I was kind of feeling burnt out with the other stuff I was doing. Yeah. So I hit him up. He's like, "Hey, can you can you hook me up?" Okay. And, he's like, yeah. and then so uh, we started. So getting you got the you got the job. Now your first month, because you, you like I said, you've only been really in sales for five months now. OK, so your first month, you didn't have any PQ. You just I'm assuming did you use their standard scripts or what happened? N you know, so when I first got into it, obviously, before that, I was dabbling a little bit uh, with any PQ. Obviously, some of the content I've seen and here and your so you saw channel. some of the free content, just the, yep. basic, the basic stuff. OK, yeah. 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 So, you know, I thought that was enough would be, oh, I'm asking the same questions. I, sh I should be getting the same results as Jeremy and the other guys, right? Yeah. But uh, little did I know, I didn't, it's like I had the manual, but like not really, right? Like I, well, I was you didn't trying know to- how to, You didn't know how to operate the manual. It, exactly, right? So- You, you didn't know the uh, ins and outs because 90% of the conversations don't go perfect. Exactly, like I don't know why I'm asking you. I don't know what the purpose of that question is. I don't know what to do when they answer in a different way, right? So I thought I was asking the same things and yeah. I, I thought I was. 
Yeah. But uh, I was not getting the results I wanted. Yeah, you weren't getting the results. You're like, oh, shit, maybe I should actually get into the training and start learning. So mm -hmm. I think from what I understand, your income the first month without the training, just off some basic reels and some basic stuff you saw in the Facebook group, which we give out little nibbles. But that's like 0.00000001% of our virtual training for our clients and our group training our clients go through. That's, it's like not, it's not even a 10th of a 10th of 1%. So you get into the, so you, without it, you'd make a couple grand. And then that second month you get into it. And what type of results did you get the second month? So I basically quadrupled my, my yeah. commissions. Um, That's pretty normal. Yeah. So you went from like two grand to like, I think eight grand the second month or something like, like that. Like eight, nine. Yeah. Eight or nine. Okay. And then you've kind of scaled from that. Now let's talk about that. So that's good because you're really only in five months. So you're on pace to probably make at least 150 grand this first year. If you keep learning, you should make well over 200 with what you, so maybe even 250, maybe even 300 if you keep learning. Cause like exactly. I said, you're just into this five months. Okay. Uh, each month you should be going up by three to five grand a month in commissions for sure. Um, okay. So let's talk about it. So Connecting questions. What is one? Let's give them some goods here. Give these people some goods so they can use it for different industries that they're in. What's one good? Because you get like inbound leads, right? Like people book on the calendar. Yeah. Okay. So people book on the calendar. They're like, hey, I've got this marketing agency. They, they might know they have a problem, but maybe not really how bad it is. You know, you're still going to have people that want to think it over, need to talk about it. They're undecisive if you don't have the right skills. It's just like any other sales job right? Even though they're somewhat interested. Okay. Yeah. So what's one good connecting question that we've taught you? And because there's several different connecting questions you would ask for what you sell. And why does it work? So like one of them would be like, hey, so when you're going through XYZ influencers, uh, one of videos, yeah. what was it that I guess, attracted your attention? Okay. And why, why is it? That's a basic question. But why is it so important to ask in the beginning? So it's basically, it gives them to understand like the overarching, like a brief goal, what they're looking for, right? Maybe they want to make more money. Oh, like I want to leave my job, make more money. Oh, I want to stop working so much. And yeah. they'll say something like brief like that. Okay, so we know why we're there for. Yeah. And then you can take the conversation from there. Yeah, it helps, it the helps them kind of like get into the flow, of like why they're actually on the call with you. Like what, what is the purpose? It's reminding okay. them of why they even asked to have that call with your company in the first place, why they responded to the ad, right? Now there's other connecting questions you have to ask before that to set it up. And then there's one after that you ask for your industry, but we don't have time to go through those. Now, um, what did you typically ask the first month with, without that? I have to know before you really got into training, what were you asking? Yeah. So like the first question, I mean, we would kind of do like two minutes of small talk, right? So it's like, how oh, are you? Today? Where are you calling in from? It's like, oh, great. The weather outside, isn't it great? Where the sun is up and the clouds, aren't they just great? We'll do that for like two minutes. And then I'll be like, okay, so, you know, uh, let's get right into it. If you have a pen and paper ready. Um, so like, what's your uh, biggest challenge in your XYZ right now? So yeah, yeah. we would. Most we people would. aren't going to open up to that, especially in the beginning. Yeah. It's too early. Yeah. Okay, good. So you found that that hard, the hard way. Yeah, so a lot of people kind of shut down, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes like they'll give me a response kind of reluctantly. And a yeah. lot of times they'll be like, uh, I don't know about struggling. Um, yeah, yeah, like exactly. It's too early. There's no trust, right? Yep. You haven't established any credibility. There's no status. You haven't raised your status in their mind for sure. So one thing we always want to avoid on any type of sales call, and I, I unpopular opinion, because I know all of you on here listening have been taught to get on your sales call and say, how are you doing today? But guess what? Your prospects know that you don't give a damn about how they're doing today, that it's just small talk. When a salesperson asks you how you're doing today, you know what? They don't care. They're not going to sit there and listen to you for 15 minutes talking about how your damn day is going. Nobody cares. When you say little small talk like that, you have to realize salespeople for decades have been doing what? Asking the same damn question. So when you ask the same questions that every other salesperson has ever asked that prospect that you're trying to sell to, guess where they go in their mind? Just another salesperson trying to sell me something and they start to emotionally shut down. Now that's not saying you have a few that will open up, but for the most part, most of them will know exactly why you're asking it and you don't really care and they push you off to the side. I hate to tell you guys that, but that is what the data says, not just my opinion. 
So you got to get rid of that. Small talk does not build status in their brain of you being an expert and a trusted authority in what you're doing, which you have learned that, Brian, the hard way the first yep. month. Luckily, you changed quickly and didn't have to struggle for months, if not years. Oh, they're not. I don't want to learn advanced training. I'm just going to keep struggling, pounding the sand. All right. So now situation questions. Uh, what's one good situation question we've taught you to use and why is it so powerful? So for my industry, for people helping, you know, people uh, start a, a business, for example. Like a market, so basically, right? Yeah. So it'll be like, like, what are you doing to get what you just told me now? So it'll yeah. be for me, it'll be like, so, okay. So like, what, what are you doing for a living now? What do you do for work? Yeah, because you have to find out their current situation. So you have two different type of avatars with what you sell. You're selling marketing agency, like basically consulting because you teach people how to run and scale their marketing agency. So you're going to have some prospects that don't have a marketing agency, but they see an ad, they have some type of nine to five job and they're like, oh, I want to start that. How would I start that? What do I need to do? And then you have some leads of people who are already have a marketing agency but it's not really growing like they want. They're not scaling it. It's not making millions of dollars a year, if not more. So they're stuck and they need the skill level to be able to advance, right? So there's some different situation questions you ask for those type of people compared to somebody who's never, who's just wanting to start a market agency, but has not started yet. Because if they've already started one, their problem is probably getting leads or leads for their external clients. So you'd say, now walk me, walk me through. What are you doing? What are you doing? Walk me through, what are you doing right now to, to bring in new leads and new clients to the business, right? Because that's probably their struggle. They're not bringing enough new leads and clients. So it'd be a little bit of a different situation question for that type of prospect. If it's somebody that's never started one, then you would say, well, what do you do for work now? What do you do for living? Because you're finding out their current situation, right? And yep. not only are you finding out the current situation, which gives you an overview of what's going on, but more importantly, who's really starting to find out what their situation is? Themselves. Themselves. Because most people don't sit around thinking about their situation until you ask the right questions that allow them to think deeper about it. Now, there's a lot of other situation questions you have to ask for your industry. There's probably about three or four more. Uh, we don't have time for that. Um, problem awareness. Now, once we and them have found out what their real situation actually is, yep. we then have to start building a gap from where they are. We call that their current state to where they want to be. We call that their objective state. The gap is only determined by your questioning ability and your tonality ability to deliver those questions that trigger them to go below the surface and open up about what their real problems are. Because most of your prospects in all industries don't really know what their real problems are. Or maybe they have an idea, right? But they don't really understand how bad the problem is. Or maybe they don't understand the consequences of what will happen if they don't do anything about solving the problem, right? So through your advanced questioning, it allows them to see that not only do they have one problem, but maybe they have two or three or four other problems they didn't realize they had, right? Okay, so what's one good problem awareness question we've taught you to ask? And why is so it so the, uh, Yeah, it's the classic two truths, right? Yeah. So, okay, so you've been a nurse for the last five years. So do you, do you like what you're doing for a living? Yeah, and they could say, oh, I do, or no, I don't. Or they could be like, well, and they're kind of in the middle, right? So did, you, did everybody see Brian's pause there? So he repeats back what they said their situation is. So in his industry, with what he's that type of avatar, that prospect, they have a job, they want to start a marketing agency, or they want to start some type of business where they can make more money, have more time. Marketing agency is that lever there, that avenue. Okay, so you've been ex at this same job XYZ years. Do you, do you like what you're doing for a living? See that verbal pause triggers them to think deeper about the question you asked. Now, if Brian had not paused, if he had said this, so you've been a nurse for five years, do you like what you're doing for a living? Most of his people would probably say, yeah, I love it. I love what I do for a living, okay? But because of that pause, what does that emotionally do to the prospect? It triggers them to go deeper, right? To think about it deeper, okay? And that's where you start to get some pain at this point. Not all their pain, but some pain. The gap starts to build. Now, there's other problem awareness questions that we try to ask after that. They're very important. Okay, you can't just ask that one and expect to build a massive gap. Solution awareness questions. Now we're getting them to see what their problems are, but now we get, get them to see what their future is going to look like once the problems are solved. So what's a good solution awareness question we've tried to ask? Uh, solution awareness, probably like the first question, right? Okay, so before you start talking to me, were you out there looking for ways to 
start your own business so you could make more money or what were you doing? Yeah. So notice he's asking them what they've done in the past about changing their situation so they can. And he repeats back what they said they wanted. Did everybody notice what Brian just did? That is very, that's important. You have to throw that in. You have to repeat back what they said they wanted. If he would have just said, before you talk to me, were you out there looking for ways to start a business? That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Starting a business gets them what? make more money. He's not selling them the business. He's selling them the results of what that business is going to do for them, which Brian is going to do what? Make them more money. That's what they're buying, not the business itself. That's just the thing. You're not selling the thing, right? Now, how do people respond to that question when you ask it? So they'll go different ways, right? So they'll be like, oh, no, I didn't do anything. Oh, I actually tried this course. And then depending on what they say, now you can dig deeper. Yeah. Um, and I, I just think this is a crucial part of the the structure just because you can prehandle so many objections just in the stage. Yeah, it's true. Right. Because they might be like, oh, I haven't done anything. Well, what's held you back from trying to find your own business, though? See, that's a soft. It challenges them where they're like, well, yeah, why haven't I? Right. Uh, and they could have like some type of objection, like a fear based objection there. And you know that you have to help them overcome that. Otherwise, when you get to the end, bring up the funds they'll need to start the business, you know that they're going to have the same objection if you can't help them overcome it, right? Perfect. 100%. So this has been a game changer, depending on what they say, like challenging them, like you said, yeah. in a more collaborative way that has prehandled so many objections for me. So it's been a game changer. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, definitely for sure. And you're still learning. Like I said, yeah. you're, you're a baby. You're just five months yeah. in. Five months from now, you'll be a skilled pro. You're probably making double what you are now, at least. There you go. All right. Now, uh, consequence questions. So there's other solution awareness questions you have to ask. But like I said, we don't have time to give all that out. So uh, consequence questions. Now that you get them to see what the future is going to look like, you have to rip that away with a consequence question that gets them to dig in their heels and tell you and themselves why they have to change now, why they can't let the problem keep happening. What's a good consequence question we've taught you? So depending on what they say, right? So basically what happens if insert, if problem continues here, yeah. and if you don't achieve the goal you just told me here, so it'll sound something like, okay, so what happens if you don't do anything about this? You keep working the 60 hours a week. Yeah. And you never become that father who's able to be there for your children before they grow any older. Like, like what happens then? And how do they respond to that? So there's two ways, right? So most of them, if you did a great job, they'll answer like 70% of the time, they'll be like, that'd be, um, it'd be depressing. Yeah. They'd be sad. That or they'll be like, oh no, I'm definitely going to do something about this. They'll say yeah. one of those two things. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Now the probably 20 to 30% say what? No, they will be like the 20 or 30%, right? 70% of the time they'll be like, oh, it'd be depressing. They'll see the actual consequence. Yeah. And then like probably like the other 30% will be like, oh no, like I'm, I'm going to do like, I got to do something. Yeah. Now, if they, if they say, no, no, I've got to do something. That's what you want them to say. Now, if they say, well, that would be really depressive. What you want to do is challenge them on that. Well, are you, are you willing to settle for that? No, 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 no. I'm not going to stay that way. Okay. But why so important to you now? Like, why not, you know, why look at doing this now? Like, why not push it down the road? Like unsuccessful people would. It's very hard for them to want to be like what unsuccessful people. Yeah. Right now for each industry, you'd have to relanguage that. Like if you're selling life insurance, you wouldn't say, why look at the policy now? Like why not push it down the road? Like unsuccessful people would, that wouldn't make any sense. But for what you're selling to business owners, wanting to start their own business, that makes complete sense. So in each industry, you guys are out there. We teach you how to relanguage that in our virtual training platform and our group training platforms as well. Okay. Cause there's going to be little tweaks in different industries. All right. Um, okay. Now presentation, we don't have time to go through that because that's a little bit longer. Uh, commitment questions. How did you use to try to close before NAPQ? What would you say before? Do you remember? Oh, I don't even know if I remember, but I think I try to like get them to say like how much, uh, is it okay? Like on a scale from one to 10, that, that kind of <laughs> cheesy thing and do okay. like on a scale from one to 10, like how much do you like the program or something like that? Some weird, right? Something like that. Um, but yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit cheesy kind of saying it. A little bit cheesy, didn't work, a little bit salesy. Now we've taught you to ask commitment questions and the right tonality to ask your commitment questions. Now, let me give everybody a warning. If you don't understand any PQ, 
and you take a couple of these questions and you get to the end and ask a commitment question, do you think you're just going to close five, four times more than you are now? Unlikely, because there's a lot more to this than just a few questions that I pulled out of Brian here. We're just giving you a few golden nuggets. There's a lot more to this. Brian, would you say that before you got in the training? Because you went through some of the free training before, the basic reels, the little stuff. But then when you got into the real training, the client training, what was the biggest difference? It was literally, I thought I knew because I had the questions. I thought I was asking the same questions as Jeremy, but it's a tip of the iceberg, maybe the tip of the tip, because if the client, you know, if the prospect sends something different than what you're expecting, you don't know where to take it. And, and that's on 90% of the calls. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, no sales call goes a hundred percent. Exactly. Easy, easy peasy without anything coming up. Maybe a few lay downs. You're talking maybe 5%, 10% of your yep. life. That's very so it's like what you say. It's like getting them back on the yellow brick road, right? If they go off here, it's like, oh, get them back in here. Okay, they go here. Da, 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 it's da. the ins and outs. If you don't know the ins and outs, you're still going to struggle 100%. Uh, what's one good commitment question you try to ask, though? Commitment question. So after the presentation, obviously, um, you're getting by in, in between. And after, like, okay, so with, while we just lay it out, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Why do you pause there? You end up to think a little bit, right? Just like you said. Yeah. And um, so now they're actually thinking about, okay, like what we just talked about briefly, and then they give a more thoughtful answer. You get more buy-in. They're persuading themselves even more. Yeah, 100%. Um, Brian, Mr. South Korea, any last words of advice you would give somebody listening right now that's maybe new to sales like you are, or maybe is a veteran and that's, you know, just stuck at a certain income level and just can't can't get above it, can't figure it out. Yeah, so I'll tell you this at this point, like I've spent over a hundred grand in different coaching programs, whether it be business, sales, dating, fitness, mindset, whatever it may be. And I'm not just saying this because I'm on here, but the reason why I'm on here because I believe in this product so much. Yeah. Okay. So I've never gotten such a direct ROI from a program like this. Mm -hmm. And it is just it was just genius. How well, you're only five program. months in. That's I know that's a thing, and that's the thing. I feel like I don't know that much either. It's like the more you learn about it, it's like the, the 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 matrix, right? We're like, oh, like I feel like there's even more that I don't know. Yeah. And it's it's just it just changed the entire game for me. I believe in it so much. That's why I'm here, yeah. you know, endorsing it out, you know, sharing my experience. Well, there so, you go. Do it. Well, there's a reason why we have almost 10,000 testimonials at this point and growing in the last 30 months. Yours included. I've seen a few of yours. Now Cool thing about Brian is, is we were so impressed by his willingness to learn and being so young, get into the training, just not know anything, brand into sales, went from like one grand to 10 grand, basically in like two months, making more now that, you know, he applied to work with us. We have a lot of people that apply with us, like every day, we probably get 10 new applications from salespeople in the Facebook group or on Instagram. How do we work with you, Jeremy? We want to sell the product. And we just sat there and we're like, well, how can we hire you when you don't even know what any PQ is? You've seen some freebie reels. What are you going to sell using old school skills with our program? Probably not going to happen. So we only hire from within. So when somebody applies and we have an interview, that's going to be the first question. Well, are you in our advanced training programs? What type of results are you getting with what you sell now? If they're not in, why would we hire them? Why are we going to hire somebody that we know, somebody that's in our advanced inner circle program would make five times more than that? It wouldn't make any sense, right? So we actually hired Brian about a week, was it about a week and a half ago, two weeks? Only a few days ago, Jeremy. <laughs> a few days ago, okay, you know. <laughs> so we were so impressed, you know, our CEO was so impressed by this kid that we're like, you know what, let's hire this kid. I think he'll be pretty good. Uh, he's willingness to learn. So uh, you're actually, some of you will be booked with Brian. I think we have 19 full-time account executives now at this point that, that just, go over the seventh level different programs. It's not our done for you stuff. We have a lot more on the done for you side. Uh, but congratulations, Brian. A lot of people apply for those jobs uh, and most don't get them. So well done, you're gonna do really well. Um, so you guys wanna start learning those skills, you know, message Brian in the group. You know, Brian can help you for sure. He's a product of the product. He's still going through the training right now. He's still a client and we actually hired him as well. I think you're number 19 or 20 on the team as far as account executives obviously a bigger team than that with everything else but uh guys you want to start learning those skills uh, you know if 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 you're a person like hey man i'm i'm just i want to make more money than i am now like i'm working 40 50 hours a week 
I might as well learn advanced skills so I can convert twice as high. Because when you convert twice as high, what happens? You make twice as much money, usually more than that. So if you're already going to be on the same amount of sales calls, why not learn advanced skills to convert two to three times more than you are now? Call me crazy. I don't know. So if you guys want to learn those skills, you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions. You want to start making 15 or 20 grand a month in commissions. We have thousands of people in your industry that are doing that right now, watching us right now. You watching me and Brian right now. I can assure you we have hundreds, if not thousands of people making that type of money every single month. We also have people, our clients that are in your industry watching us right now that make 25 grand a month every month, 30 grand a month every month, 40 grand, 50 grand a month, selling the exact same thing you are now, same industry as you are now. It's not because they have cooler hair. It's not because they wear cool clothes. It's not because they, you know, they brush their teeth a certain way or they journal every night and in the morning and they take cold showers. It has nothing to do with that because those things are not going to help you sell more. It's what you're saying and not asking. That is the problem and your tonality. Because when the prospect picks up the phone, I hate to tell you all the meditation you're doing now, I love it for your personal life. It's all going to go out the window when your prospect says hello and you don't know what to say and ask that triggers them to go below the surface rather than going into fight or flight mode and emotionally shutting down and try to get rid of you. None of that counts. I can assure you because I've done all that before. It doesn't work if you want to sell a lot more. Okay. So once the team member understands what industry you're in now, because we train every industry on the planet now, we're in 158 industries and subsets of all of them. Okay. We're in everything that you can think of that's sold. So once they understand your industry, once they understand what commissions you're making now compared to where you want to make, and what you're saying and asking that's causing you not to be able to get here, then they can suggest the right training program that's going to take you from here to here the quickest, the quickest ROI, like Brian said. Brian got an ROI the first three days. Okay. Brian, thanks so much. What time is it in North in South Korea right now? <laughs> North Korea. Uh, it's uh, 7.35 a.m. right now. So. Seven at oh, night or in the morning? In the morning. Yeah. So you're up early. Oh, wow. Wow. You start early. You probably start early. What? At five in the morning up there? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Trying to keep up with Dan, but, uh, yeah. Wake yeah. Up early. Dan, uh, Dan in our, on our team is in Perth. So yeah. he's, he's even behind you, I think. Or about one hour behind me. Yeah. Yeah. One hour behind you, baby. I'll let you go. I know you got calls. Thanks everybody. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another, you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.